Hello and welcome. Well, it is um, the continuation of our wonderful festive um, weekend, quite frankly. It's running till Tuesday, um, as is the festive flexit flexiganza. <laughs> Oh, I don't like that word. Um, but it means if you're spending over five pounds like this, you can split it into two payments. So today you can pay seven pounds for this, but split it into two payments if you want to. Three pound fifty and then three pound fifty next month, uh, which is marvellous, isn't it? Um, now we have got, and this is the the second week of our wonderful craft along, um, and I'm really looking forward to this. It's one of those, our lovely Catherine. It's one of those that you. Well, I can just chill out, but <laughs> people just chill out and craft with you. It's such a good concept. They can. And at the end of last week, you were set homework I know lots of people have continued and finished their homework and are ready to go again if you haven't done that if you missed out on the first week don't worry we've got more to come yeah and the thing is I mean people can watch this on catch up you yeah. can watch it again so that's not a problem so this is week two of the project that's already sold out isn't yes. it yes yes it has sold out I know people have been contacting me today and saying can we still get it I wasn't sure till I got here but no it has gone mm. and that's why we've got something else this amazing time, mm. so this is going to be the next craft along with our lovely Catherine um, it's going to start the classes are going to start from the 5th of August and this is completely different to, to what you're doing today um, so this is a, a really nice way of using your lovely little granny squares it isn't, is, it? isn't it I mean I started with a granny square I think it's how most people start uh, just stitching those granny squares and of course you can stitch them together in many different ways if you're a quilter or a patchworker you'll straight away think oh yeah I do a similar thing with my fabrics yeah. well yes you know you've got the option there if you've never tried crochet before this is a great great kit to go for it's something that you're going to complete and something again that is very usable yeah yeah and again um, a little bit different so you are going to get with this one um, you're going to get your your balls of yarn you're going to get the hook and then of course um, what so do you get instructions or is it basically you need to be tuning in every week is that how it works there will be instructions as well that will be received with the kit but the idea is it is for people to craft along yeah um, so you you know we will talk you through we'll hold your hand yes but you will get instructions as well so you can keep those for another time as well amazing yeah. amazing um if you <laughs> bear with um okay um if you do want to get hold of this we have eight quid should have been eight pound souls um, it should have been eight pounds. We do apologise. That should have been eight pounds. That has been changed. So it's four pounds this month, four pounds next month if you wanted to do that. It's only a little change. Um, but yeah, I mean, when you think about it, it's such good value for money. And the thing is with these, they are such good value for money to hopefully get you involved um, and get you having a go. That's what we want you to do. Have a go. Remember, this one starts on the 5th of August. Uh, 57577. Zero eight. However, we are carrying on with week two of uh, the first project in the craft along. We certainly are. So if you have done your homework, you should have reached row number 14. We're ready to do 15. Now, you probably thought, well, why has she stopped at 14? Why didn't we just go to 15? Well, there is a difference because it's where we change a stitch. Now, before I do go any further, let me just show you, first of all, this is I've, I've actually created right up to row 14 myself as well. So we're going to do this together together of course um, I've just made a bigger loop there just so I can put my hook back in there but I did think do you know I was looking at the feedback and I've had lots of wonderful feedback um, there's people that have cracked the magic circle for the first time ever I did show you an alternative way of starting as well although we've done this although if you've been following along we've already done that magic circle or the alternate way I did think I would just run that over that again because there's one or two people that tried didn't get it did get it, didn't get it, you know, there's alternatives as I say, but I thought it'd be nice just to repeat that magic circle. I'm only going to show you a couple of different ways. I'm going to show you the cheats way and I'm going to show you the alternate way. Okay. Uh, because I think these are the ones that everybody found easiest. Mm, nice. So, using one ball of my yarn, it doesn't matter which ball I'm using here because I am just repeating the process of how I started last week. So I'm going to show you my cheats way of doing a magic circle. Now I'm taking the tail end of the yarn, so you can see that is the, the loose end of the yarn, and I'm just going to use um, one finger to wrap this around, so I'm going to go around uh, diagonally, 
Okay. Bring that thread or that yarn across. So I've formed that cross and I'm just going to hold the other end of the yarn in my thumb. So I've got a very loose cross around my finger. I don't want it too tight because I've got to get the hook underneath there. Then I'm going to go in from the right. I am right-handed, so I'm doing this on my left hand. I'm going to go in from the right. I'm going to pick up the piece of yarn that's on the left hand side and I'm going to pull that through underneath. So I've just basically, I've just crossed that through. Then what I'm going to do is release the yarn end that is attached to the ball. Okay. I'm going to put that around my fingers as though I'm crocheting and I'm going to do one little stitch. So wrap round, pull through the loop and then I can slide that magic circle off my finger. And if oh. I pull the end, you can see how that will slide. Now, when you make the magic circle, you don't have to pull it tight straight away because what we started with was six double crochet stitches into that circle. Right. Now, okay. the alternative way, I'm not doing the double crochets at the moment, the alternative way, if you really, really can't get the grasp of a magic circle, is to make a slip knot. So again here, I've got the tail of the yarn. I'm going to make a loop. I'm going to take the long end of the yarn, the, the end that's attached to the ball, loosely wrap it around that loop. So I've found a second loop down at the bottom. And I'm going to bring that, actually I've done that wrong. Let me get the other end first. So I've got the tail end, make the loop, take the tail end around the first loop and thread it through the loop that you've just created because you need to pull that right through. And there you've got your slip knot. So when you put that onto your hook and you pull the main piece of yarn, you can see that will form the stitch on your hook. Now, if you're not doing the magic circle, this is the alternative, as I say. So all I would do is wrap the yarn around the hook and pull through the loop. That is one chain, round again, pull through, so I've got two chain stitches. If you were watching last week, you've already done this because you've made a, a, a drawstring cord for your bag. What I would do then is go into the first chain. Now this is where, when you make the first one, it's a little bit difficult to get that hook in. It's the tightest stitch, but once you get going, do you know, I haven't got my glasses on, that's why I can't see. <laughs> 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 Feeling around for the stitch. <laughs> so you can see here, I don't know how close we are with the camera. So you've got one, two stitches. So I want to go into that first chain stitch with the end of the hook. And now we will do those six double crochets. So double crochet, you're into the stitch, you take the yarn around the hook, you pull it through the stitch, so you've got two loops on the hook. Okay. Yarn around and through both loops. And I would repeat that another five times. And that would be my alternative to a magic circle because you're starting with those six double crochet stitches. So that's three, just counting as I do it, four, five, six. Now that's the only bit I'm going to repeat from last week just in case anybody was still struggling and they didn't know where to start. Ah, look at there that. you can see that is the very, very center. Then if I bring in the base of the bag that we've got, this is what it will look like. So there's the magic circle okay. or the alternative. And then we've worked those 14 rows around to create the base of our bag. Perfect. Now the bag is circular, but you do, you do really create what looks like a hexagon because you increase six times and on every point, you see that little point, but yeah. that will get lost as we work on this bag, yeah. that will disappear. So now we're ready to start with the next part of the lesson. So I'm just going to reattach my hook. So I'm just going to pull that loop a little bit smaller. Okay. Pop my hook, it, hook, hook in. So there we are. Back to where we started or where we finished actually. Now this is where it changes a little bit. All of the base was done with a double crochet stitch. It was just repetitive going around, increasing as we go so you get larger and larger. If we look at instruction number 15, row number 15, it says double crochet, DC is the abbreviation, double yep. crochet in the back of each loop from previous row. So you've never done that before, okay. not in this pattern. Right. It shows you how many stitches in brackets at the end. So you're not increasing anything, you're not decreasing anything. You're yep. keeping the same amount of stitches, but the method is slightly different. 
So everybody get ready, get your yarn around your hand, however you find it comfortable to hold, get your hook ready, whether you're right-handed or left-handed, the instructions are the same, obviously you're just using opposite hands. Yeah. Now if I was continuing on, I would be going into the stitch, if I just turn this to the top so you can see, you can see a V that runs all around the edge of the, the previous row. That is your stitch, each V is a stitch. Oh. So normally, we go right through under both of those pieces of yarn, right under the full V, right. and we would form our stitch. But we're not going to do that. It tells us to go into the back loop. So all we're going to do, look at the V, and you're just literally going to take your hook in between those two stitches that form the V, ah, okay. and you're only going into the back. But then it's the same method. We're going to wrap the yarn around the hook. We're going to pull it through, so you've got two loops on there yarn around the hook and pull through both loops together so you're left with one stitch on your hook i'm going to do that again so i can see the next v okay. working into the back of it we're going into the center of the v to pick up that piece of yarn at the back of the loop yarn around pull it through yarn around the hook pull it through again and we're going to continue that way all the way around now that i've made the biggest mistake ever well it's not a mistake but there's something i was telling everybody to do last week and that yeah. was put a stitch marker in before they started oh. and i haven't done it but i can see where i start and stop and if you're counting you know you've got 84 stitches so if you are counting in your head you know you should keep with that 84 stitches so we're yeah. going to work our way all around right round the edge doing exactly the same thing into How the back of the loop. How are you counting then? I'm not. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not. I can multitask but I'm not. I can't actually see where I've started and I've finished. And so, but the next row I will put a stitch marker in yeah. just so we know where it is. Although to be fair we've got to a point now where the stitch markers aren't quite as important. Yeah. Now if I just stop for a minute because you can see where I'm working. If I lay this down Oh, you can yeah. see a difference in the stitch because we're going into the back of the loop. Yeah. It kind of leaves, you can see the front of the V yes. running all the way across. So I'll know when I get to the end yeah. because I can yeah. see where I've started. Yeah, I get so it. that is what you should be getting there. Yeah, now there is a awesome. reason why we go into the back of a loop. It won't be obvious just yet, but if I continue just working a normal stitch, that's what I'd do if I was making uh, something like the doll at the side of me, the yeah. head or the body. So I want kind of a rounded shape yeah. and you want it to continue and your shape decrease, increase and you, you then stuff and it, you get that nice rounded shape. Yeah. When you go into the back of the loop, it almost starts to form a wall. Right. And because we've got the side of the bag, I want it to go straighter. Uh, yes. So that's why we do that. And it also looks quite nice. There's yeah. lots of stitches where you will work into the back of the loop to create decorative stitches as well. So what's this one called? This stitch called? Is this a double? Did you say this, this is a double crochet, but you're just working into the back of the loop. So right. I'm going to continue around. Everybody at home, you just keep going because you need to get all the way around to your 84 stitches. I'm going to go a little bit slower again in case somebody's come in a little bit late into the, uh, the lesson. So we're going again with the hook into the centre of the V, which is our stitch. And yeah. so we're only picking up that back loop. Yarn around the hook, pull it through the stitch, yarn around the hook and take it through both stitches. So you should always end up with just one stitch Excellent. on your hook. Yeah. Okay. So we're going to continue. I'm going to speed up a little bit. I think we've shown that stitch a number of times now. Yeah. So we're going to work all the way to the beginning and then we've got another stitch that we're going to move to. Beautiful. Um, we've had a few emails actually saying they're really enjoying the craft along. Thank you ever so much. Um, Oh, and ha Catherine's tutor tutorial <laughs> has really helped them as well. Um, if you've got questions, it is live. I know you're probably at this moment in time trying to count and probably shouting at your telly to, for me to shut up. <laughs> 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 I apologise, but at least I'm not saying numbers. It could be worse. <laughs> right, now I've got to the point where I would have normally done an increased stitch. So one of those points of the hexagon. 
all you do, just ignore that. You're not going to increase or decrease this time. You're just going to find every single one of those Vs and work into it. So, you know, as I say, check the numbers in the brackets because that's the amount of stitches that you should end up with and make sure that, you know, if you are doing this at home, I know you're trying to listen to me and concentrate as well. But if you are counting, great. If you're not and you haven't put a stitch marker in, you will see where you've started. So it's not the end of the world. Can I also say as well, and I, I don't know that I really mentioned this much last week, crochet can be very, very forgiving. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a term that I read in a book which sort of sums it up. If sometimes, if you're not quite right, you can fudge it. <laughs> yeah, we like that. <laughs> you can fudge it. So, yeah. <laughs> and this project actually is one of those projects where you could fudge it a little bit. Yeah. Because this is a base to a bag. If you end up with one stitch too less, if you end up with a couple yes. of stitches too many, it's not going to be the end of the world. Yeah. When we get nearer to the top of the bag where the frill is, or where we thread the draw th drawstring through, then you might want to be a little bit more accurate, but if you're not, there are ways around it. So if anybody is thinking, oh, I've made a mess, I've, you know, I'm, I've got it all wrong, I've not counted right, please, please, please do not worry, don't give up, just keep going, because it will come right. Yeah. And the thing is with it, I mean, especially if this is your first project, if it's your first yeah. project and you don't make a mistake, that's amazing. It Surely really is. you expect to, to make a boo boo on your first project. Yeah. Now there's there's a couple of things I'm going to mention just as I'm working my way around again, Leonie, as well, that um, I had lots and lots of feedback. We had such amazing feedback after the show last week. There one there was one or two, and I know nobody minds me saying this, there was one or two that struggled with the yarn. Different yarns got sent out depending on when the kits sold out and mm. substitute yarns came in. If you struggle at any point with your yarn or your hook, do not give up. Take it as a practice piece. Just practice those stitches. Don't think you need something amazing as a project at the end of it. This is to help you on your way. This is yeah. a journey. You can always get some different yarn. You can change your hooks. It's just about the method, really, the technique, yeah. rather than expecting to get a really perfect finish. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very cost effective as well. Very cost effective. But I think it's just nice to be able to watch it um, and have a live lesson. I think that's the, the nice thing about this, isn't it? Definitely. And there's a reason why I did the project that I did, Leonie, as well, because the base of the bag is double crochet. Yeah. We're now doing back of the loop. Although it's double crochet, it's a different method. We're going to move on shortly onto the treble crochet, which is a different stitch again. When we work our way to the top of the bag, we've got the frill to do. So you, you change sizes of the stitches to make sort of a shell effect. Yeah. We've done the chain stitch for the drawstring, which is a very basic stitch. That's where we started, actually. You know, so you're learning various yeah. different stitches. We've done increase on this. Um, I don't think we're going to decrease as such on this project, but you know, we can, we'll probably do that another time. Yeah. So it is about, you know, learning the basics. And then if you look at the work that is available or the patterns that are, yes. are available on the market for crochet, yeah. some of the things you just wouldn't believe had been crocheted. Yeah. It's just amazing. It is amazing. Oh man, some of the things and some of the yarns you can get are just beautiful, yeah. aren't they? They really are. And don't forget with crochet as well, a little bit different to knitting, unless you're doing Tunisian crochet and then you tend to have more than one stitch on the hook. Yeah. Most of the time when you're doing general crochet, all you're left with is that one stitch, so it's something you can put down and you can pick up. Yeah. It's very portable. Yeah. It's very sociable. I find it very mindful. Um, it does relax me. I actually now get withdrawal <laughs> symptoms when do I you? can't do. I do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah I you know need it sounds. You crochet. I know it sounds strange, but I do. I, you know, I miss it. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's a way of sort of winding down for me, you know, because yes. you know I drive a long way, you know, yeah. so. Um, so this is your chilling out. It's my chilling out, right? Mm. I just want to show everybody something because this is why I should have been counting and put a stitch marker in. <laughs> I can see I've gone past where I started because oh. I can see I can see that. No, yeah. but it's a good thing because you can okay. see the pattern. Yeah. So if anybody's getting another line, you've gone too far. So I'm just going to go back. And look how easy it is. There it is. So now I've completed Amazing. all the way around the base of my bag. Now, this is a difficult thing, Leonie, because I've no idea how fast people are going at home. Yes, it is a bit tricky, isn't it? Are it they ready for the treble or well, not? Shall I give a, a, 
update on this just in case. You do that just in case. Just in case. And we'll give to them time people, just, to, just yeah. to catch up. Um, okay. Just in case. We're going to give you a little bit of time to catch up if you need to. Um, but please remember, you can watch this on catch up anyway. So if you do struggle at any time, uh, then it is still available. Um, okay. This is obviously the first project, however, that we're working on currently. Um, however, we have got now for you the second project and the lessons for this will be starting on the 5th of August. Now, you have got the materials for this, so you've got your yarn, you've got your hook, you're getting instructions, and it's giving you, oh, you're going to be creating a really pretty little bag made out of your granny squares. And I love that, because again, because <laughs> again, that looks really achievable, but a little bit different as well. Um, and beautiful color palette there. But it is about the technique, it's about the ideas, it's about learning. Uh, we are Catherine, and being able to create something from scratch. Uh, 575 Eight is your item number it's only eight pounds and they are i mean it's just such good prices for these kits and um, if you would like to get hold of that remember it is our festive flex travaganza um, so it means today you can split this if you want to you can split it into two payments just four pounds this month four pounds next month um, we do like to say as well if anybody did purchase it before we put that price up um, if anybody did purchase it we will be honoring um, the lower price I know a few of you did um, manage to get in there well done uh, managed <laughs> to get in there boom um, early bird gets the worm um, now 575708 is your item number if you'd like to get hold of that right we reckon everyone's probably caught up now okay. so back over to you our lovely right Catherine. okay so if you've all worked away your way around the edge of the bag you should have that little line that runs all the way around showing that stitch again just a reminder that when you work with that stitch in other ways or backs of loops it gives you a different effect now there are sometimes with crochet if you're working in a straight line you'll maybe go all the way to the end and then you turn and you basically come back the other way right you, you turn your work backwards and forwards oh, right. okay. what we're doing with this bag is just keeping we're going in a rotation right we're just going to keep going in a spiral so it's there's nothing difficult about it at all the surface that you're looking at now is the right side so that will end up being flipped like that because yeah. this will be the inside of the bag that but looks we're really looking pretty too. <laughs> yeah we're looking at the outside at the moment Beautiful. okay this is the the side we're working with okay so we've done row 15 now it says continue in same yarn as follows row 16 to 25 work all treble stitches abbreviated to TR so if you're looking at patterns and you see TR that's your treble okay that is all you're going to do in each row. Now, because you've got 16 to 25, that is simply the fact that it's exactly the same stitch right the way through to row 25. Wow, okay. So it is a good idea to keep a little note of what row you're on. You can write on your pattern, you can write in a notebook, you can do whatever you wish. Make a little note of what line you're on so yeah. you don't forget. Yeah. If you do an extra row, it's not the end of the it's world. It's not a big it's not deal. The end of the world. And if you do one, two, two less, it just makes your back a bit smaller. Yeah. Is this where you'd use your stitch marker thing in my yes, book as well? Yes, I've got it ready. Now, something else as well, and I cannot say who this will or won't happen to. We haven't talked about tension today. Tension will differ between people. It depends how you hold the yarn, depends on how you hold the hook it depends on the type of yarn that you're using i know some of you have got different type yarns if you find you run out of yarn before you get to row 25 do not panic just get as far as you can and that's fine will yeah. it'll work so don't worry about that if you've got spare then great you've got spare to play with for something else but you have got different types of yarn because we sold out and then sold out again um, there has been alternatives go out right so let's get going with row 16 then now we're not going to do the same row right to 25 during this hour because it is repetitive so your homework today will be to continue these rows we're going to make a start we're going to make sure everybody knows i'll repeat this process a number of times and then when i think you should have cracked it we'll move on to something else and that will be your homework super now your stitch marker if we look at bunty my little friend bunty here she's got some stitch oh, markers on her skirt she's lovely <laughs> <laughs> she's uh, got some that, like little safety pins which oh. are really really handy if you've got those they're great but do you know what it's just as easy in fact, it's easier, in a sense, to use a separate piece of yarn. So you can okay. use just an off-cut from your spare ball of yarn or something else that you've got, if you like. 
bit of string would do. It has to be a different colour though, does it? it it's to better because you can see it. I mean, yeah. if you're really struggling and you've only got one colour, then you'll manage, but it's better to have a different colour. So all I'm going to do is lay that piece of yarn across my work from front to back before I stitch. Okay, so now we're going to go. Now this is a treble. We are now no longer going to work just into the back of the loop. We're back to the full stitch. So the full stitch is of course that full V that you see on the top of your work. Now if you were doing a, d a double crochet, that's what we've done so far, you would go into your stitch first before putting that yarn around. On a treble, it's slightly different. You're going to wrap that yarn around your hook before going into the stitch. So I've now gone into the stitch. I'm going to pull the yarn through and I've got three loops on my hook. I'm going to go round with the yarn again and I'm going to pull through two loops. That will give me two loops again. Then I'm going to go round the hook with the yarn again and pull through the final two loops. That is your treble stitch. We'll do this a number of times so it's clear. Cool. So you've got your one stitch on your hook. You're going to pick up the yarn first. So wrap that yarn around your hook. So essentially you've got two loops around the hook. You're going to go right into the V, through both sides this time, remember, not just into the back. Pick up the yarn again, pull it through the stitch, so you've now got three stitches on your hook. Yarn around, and you're going to pull through two, leaving two. Yarn around, pull through the last two. That is your treble again. Cool. And you're going to repeat that, so yarn around hook, into stitch, yarn through the stitch, three loops, yarn around the hook, through two, yarn around the hook, through two. And this is the way you're going to work all around your work, right from where you've put your marker, right to the very end. So once again, you're going to have 84 stitches if you've counted. Wow. But these stitches, because they're treble, Look how much bigger they are. Oh, yeah, they They're grow a lot quick. Bigger. Yeah. yeah, they are going to grow quickly. Yeah. Now, there are, if anybody is an experienced crochet, you're probably thinking, I would have done, I don't want to confuse the beginners here. You might be thinking, oh, I would have done um, some chain stitches as my first stitch. I'm keeping it simple for the beginners here. Yeah. Um, yeah. We're just going to work in a spiral. There's different ways that you can do the rounds, but yeah. it just makes it a lot easier just to continue in a spiral. So let's slow that down again. So yarn around the hook, into the stitch, pick up the yarn again, pull it through the stitch, yarn around the hook, through two, yarn around the hook, through two. Okay. Yarn around the hook, into the stitch, yarn around the hook and pull through, yarn around, through two stitches, yarn around, through two stitches. And yes, you're right, Leone, this will create, your work um, will seem to grow much, much quicker with a treble stitch. And it is just a case of continuing, as I say, right the way around there. It's funny, because when you're saying it, it, the bit that, I mean, obviously, I'm, I'm not starting because I'm, you've, you started sort of midway, but the bit that confuses me is, uh, like, can I see my stitch that I'm going into? Yeah. But you, that's the bit that chucks me, but you can see it there, can't you? Can you can see it. We'll show it again. If you look at the top of the work, all around the previous row, you can see it's just a row of V stitches yeah. all the way around. That is the top of your stitch. So if you're working through the whole of the stitch, which we are doing at the moment, you go underneath that V. So you can see. Yeah. You can see you're picking up both sides of the yarn. It's the full V that you're working and through. And it's always the next stitch that you're going into. In this case, in this pattern, it is. Yeah. As things get more complicated, as you build up designs, you will end up missing stitches, you'll chain, yeah. then go back in with a stitch. It sounds complicated, but it's not. Once yeah. you've picked up the basics, it's very, very easy. In fact, when we come to do the flower, we'll be doing a little bit of what I've just been talking about because there is a flower as well that you're going to Perfect. create. So, yeah. And actually, we may be starting to that, that tonight, believe it or not. 
<laughs> Simply because if I spend my time doing treble stitches right to row 25, you're just watching yeah. me repeat that time and time and time again. Yeah, yeah. So, so that's people's homework, is it now, Catherine? That is going to be people's homework. Now, um, I really wanted to get back to the beginning, if I could, to show do everybody that, to start just the next that. round. Yeah. And then we'll move on because it will it will be like it's skipped a little bit on this one because yeah. because we're working in a spiral so i'm going to speed up if there's anybody at home that's really lost with that stitch and they want me to show it again please do just let us know otherwise carry on doing your treble stitches all the way around and you can obviously get in touch with us easy i <laughs> work on it i promise um you can get in touch with us easy it is live um even though i'm being really quiet and sat on a chair <laughs> it's great um the email address is studio at uh, thecraftstore.com so if you've got any questions or you are going ah Catherine please repeat that I'm stuck <laughs> um, then please email in that's the lovely thing about this it's live teller um, so it does mean that um, we are available for you to get in contact with obviously uh, you can watch this on catch up so if there is any problems whatsoever uh, you need to see it again you have got that option as well um, and I really hope you're enjoying it and um, if you do want the next kit then please make sure you get hold of that but obviously you need to do that after you've done your trebles don't put the hook down yet. <laughs> I'm saying that, but actually with crochet, you can pop it down you whenever can, you want. Can't you can, you certainly can. Do you know, you've learned already, Leonie, because you remember the name of the stitch I'm doing. So hey, you are paying attention. Boom. I mean, that you is all I've learned. Attention. Well, no, it's, I, I, I think I know the, it's just having a go, that's all. Yeah. You're left-handed as well, aren't yes, you? Yes, I am, yeah. Derek's left-handed. Derek did the show with me last week. Yeah. I did have actually feedback from some left-handed crocheters and they did manage beginners as well. Good. So that was really, really good. I am afraid I, I really am not left-handed, so I can't sort of give you any sort of extra help as to what would make it easier. It is basically the same stitches, but I presume you're just doing it the other way around. <laughs> yeah. And if, if you are left-handed and you've always been left-handed, then it, hopefully it will come naturally to you as well. Yeah, I'm gonna have to have a go. I mean, I really do. Crochet is one of them that I want to really learn because I, I love it. And there's so many beautiful patterns. I tell you what, um, we were doing one of the, the shows with the books, you know, we have the, the really gorgeous sewing books on the knitting oh, and the crochet yeah. books and some of the crochet books. <sighs> oh man, it made me really, I, you can create so many beautiful things. You really can. And in fact, when my next shows are on, the Sugar Button shows, um, I'm hoping to bring a little bit of the vintage chic into it as well as oh, Sugar Buttons. Love because that. I love anything, you know, with the florals, yeah. you can make beautiful flowers with the stitches. The granny squares, again, we've seen how you can create a bag. You can create cardigans, dresses, um, blankets. Yeah. You know, there's no end to what you can achieve with yarn and one hook. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, and the amount of yarn that's available is incredible. It really is, You know, yeah. that's the, I think that's what I love about it. It's, it just keeps giving, doesn't it? It certainly does. And something like the project we're doing now, you could change the size of the hook. The thicker the yarn, normally the bigger the hook will go. Yeah. So if you wanted to use a, um, a chunky yarn, yeah. you, would, you would change the size of the hook to a bigger one. Right, okay. And you can follow the, exactly the same pattern, but you'd get a much bigger version of yeah. it. It's nice doing that, isn't it? Just yeah. working the same pattern, but just changing it yeah. to, to see what it does. Exactly. Obviously, if you're making something to wear, a cardigan or a dress or something like <laughs> yeah. that, then Maybe you want not. to stick to the tension that is described in the patterns. It will give you different sizes and there will be a tension gauge uh, or a guide there, which is important because you, you've got to make it fit to a certain size. Right, I'm nearly there, I'm nearly there. So nearly you back do, to the so marker. Uh, I don't know you do it with... Um, we're talking as well. <laughs> uh, it's incredible. <laughs> Skills. You get so you can almost do it with your eyes shut, actually. Yeah. I did yeah. want to just come back a little bit about to how I hold the yarn as well. Because I was saying last week, there's a reason why I hold the yarn as I do. If you're watching people crochet, quite often you will see that that first finger is sticking up in the air. Yes. And they hold their work with the third finger. Yeah. And, you know, you can pick up your yarn like that, which if that's the way you want to do it, that is great. The reason that I do it this way and what I do is I'm holding the, the actual work with my 
first finger. Yeah. I take the yarn over those three fingers and wrap it around my little finger because that helps keep the yarn tighter, oh, but it okay. still allows it to move, yeah, you know, yeah. but it doesn't allow it to just sort of run away with itself. Yeah. The reason that I hold the yarn this way is because, and I'll be totally truthful, my left thumb is very painful. Right. Um, I don't know what it is. It's been like it for quite a while now. I've got an idea what caused it, but that's yeah. another story. Um, but it is quite painful, and I've found that it eases the pain in my thumb to hold the yarn as I do. Whereas oh. if I have that finger upwards and I'm I'm holding the work with my middle finger, I tend to put more pressure on with right. the thumb. Yeah. So, you know, I'm not one of these who say there is a right and wrong way. I show you how I do it. If you find a way of doing it differently, that's perfect, that's fine, that's absolutely fine. And I do know people that will wrap the, the yarn around their hook like yeah. they do with a knitting needle. Ah, yes, yes, I've seen that as well. Some people say, that is wrong, that's wrong. If it works and you're comfortable, yeah. You go for it. And that is it. It's how you feel exactly. comfortable. That's yeah. the important point. Exactly. So now you can see what's happened. I've got right back to the beginning. So you can see there, we've got the stitch marker and I know where to stop because that Perfect. marker's there. So I can just literally pull that out and then I can just replace that stitch marker and continue. Oh, now, before I put that back in, can you see what's happened there? Because I'm working in a spiral, this is where we started and this is where I finished. So it's left me with a stitch that's kind of sticking up in the air a little yes, bit. Yeah. Don't worry about that. There are different methods, as I say, but it, it can be a little bit complicated for the beginners. So we're just going to continue around. So when you do get round to that marker, take it out, then put it back over your work, because you need to move it every time you start a new row, and then you're going to continue on again. So you're literally just going to start working that second row. So it's the same stitch, yarn around the hook, find the first V, which is there, yarn around, pull it through, yarn round through two, yarn round through two, and you're going to continue again. So remember, we started on row 16, mm -hmm. this will be now row 17. So I would advise just jotting down what row you're on so you don't get confused, Yeah. and then you can work from there. So we'll just keep going. And you can see how this is going to keep building, and the more you work, the more you will see the sides of the bag starting to come up. Yeah, you can now, see it yeah, taking shape, can't you? You can. So as I've just lifted that there, yeah. that's why I go into the back of the loop. It helps that side yeah. just work. It gives it that structure. Yeah, that's so, such um, a good yeah. idea. And it's a very easy stitch to do, but yes, it's, an, it's a nice stitch to show everybody because it's something else yeah. they've learnt as well. Yeah. So homework for everybody this week is to work right to row 25. You are going to continue with whatever colour yarn you're using currently to that row and then don't cut anything off, just leave it as it is. We'll come to, you know, fast enough next week. Um, and then we'll start on the second colour of yarn next week, continuing with the bag. This is the area, if I just bring the bag in so we can see it. This is the area where it changes here, we're going to go ah, back to a yeah. double crochet, but we're going to work the drawstring eyelets in there as well. Right, okay. So there's another method involved in that. So when they're at their own work, they're right at the top of that yeah, bag Yeah, you're going to be here. Wow, so as they'll I say, be quite be far on. Yeah, it's, uh, so yeah, you can see where row 14, 15, yeah. 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. I've actually got 23 there um i left a little bit of yarn i could have gone further with it but i decided to stop there if you do run out of yarn mm. because if your tension's a little bit loose if you run out before row 25 just make it as big as you can get it perfect and it yep. won't matter it yep. won't matter perfect absolutely perfect okay okay so the other homework that's what the next? homework uh, right Catherine. okay so last week we started with the chain stitch, which is a very, very basic stitch. And we did the drawstring for the bag. We did 150 chain stitches. Um, <laughs> some of you may find that your drawstrings are longer because again, the yarn changes. Ah, so you're gonna yeah. get different, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter again. You can always redo that if you want to change the length of it, but it was good practice to do 150 stitches. Now it does seem like we're jumping up a step quite suddenly, right. but we are gonna move on to that flower. 
Right, wow, Because Already. we can't do the next step of the bag, but we can start the flower. Perfect. Okay. Okay. So if we skip out the rest of the rows and move down to where it says flower. Molly's doing the flower with you, Catherine. <laughs> she's excited. She's excited. <laughs> she, she stopped what she was doing then. She's ready. <laughs> she's ready. Right, we are going to do chain stitch again. So anybody that missed last week or doesn't know how to do chain stitch, we are going to do that first. But what it actually says is make foundation chain of 74 stitches so a foundation chain is literally just a chain stitch but it's a starting point for other stitches to go into right so the drawstring is literally just chain stitch foundation chain is the same stitch but you know you're going to work other stitches into it <laughs> sorry so, i'm trying to find my end <laughs> are you having a go well no but <laughs> yes but no but yes but no but <laughs> i can't i couldn't even find my end catherine <laughs> I mean, come on. <laughs> well, we're going to make we're I going to ma oh. make the slip the slip loop first. Anyway, okay. there are different ways of doing this. This is just my way. So I'm right-handed, but I hold the yarn in my left hand, and I'm going to form a loop so that the tail is to the right-hand side. So I presume if you're left-handed, you're going to hold it in your right hand, and the tail's going to be to your left-hand side. Okay. So. Uh, I'm I a presume. bit ambidextrous. We'll That's soon my find problem. out if Leonie can crack this one. Right, so get the tail end of your yarn. You've made that little loop. Hold it with your thumb and forefinger. You're going to then wrap that tail around the loop, just loosely, and you're going to thread the tail end through the loop that you've just made and pull it through. So you've now got your slip knot. Yes. And when you put that on your hook, you can see if you pull the main length of yarn, that will pull up against your hook. Yeah, just like when you knit, yeah, you cast someone to knit in just the same way. So you can loosen that off, you can tighten it up, but that's your starting stitch. If you're, um, if the one that tightens it up is the, the tail bit, does that mean I've done it the wrong way around? Or does it not matter? It doesn't matter. Molly said it doesn't matter. I can only tighten it with uh, the longer length but it, if, as long as you can get that stitch yep. around your hook that's all that matters this is what okay. you, this is left-handed <laughs> maybe that's what it is maybe mm. left-handed it means it pulls the other way i think it's because oh I'm if anybody's left-handed let me know that's yeah, right yeah who knows who knows catherine okay it's, it's me as well <laughs> so you've got your loop on your hook you don't want it so tight that you can't pull the yarn through there because you've got to make another stitch so I'm holding that tail end in between my thumb and forefinger and I'm wrapping the yarn around my hand ready to crochet and a chain stitch is so simple because you literally just go under the yarn with your hook picking that yarn up and you pull it through the loop and you're back to one stitch pick the yarn up pull it through okay that is all you do that is a very simple chain stitch. Now, it does tell you to make 74. Now, you know what I was saying earlier, don't worry if you're a stitch or two out. Try and get this one accurate. If you don't, email in studio at thecraftstore.com. Oh, yes, ours. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll tell you how to fudge it. Hooray! <laughs> Fudging it sounds great. We probably won't finish the whole flower this week, but we'll we'll get going. Now we I can't do any further steps until I've got those seventy-four chain stitches. So one, two, three. I think I've done four. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Do you want me to do it in my head? You know, <laughs> I'm still trying to work out one. <laughs> 23, 24. I better count out loud then. Count 25, out loud, 26. Love. You do what you want. 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, 38, 39, 40. 41, 42, 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 49, 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, 56. How's Molly getting on? Molly's doing 57. great. She's on 48. She's great. Did I say 57 then? Oh, 58, 56. I don't mind listening to you. 61, 62. 63, 64, 
65, 66, 67, 68, 69, 70, 71, 72, 73, 74 stitches. If I've not miscounted, I've got 74 stitches. <laughs> now, just in case you're not quite that quick, I'll give you a minute or two to catch up. Yeah, because... <laughs> How many has Leona got? Leona, I'm, I'm still working out. I need to work out if I'm left or right handed when it comes to crochet. Ah. My problem is because I'm slightly ambidextrous, my brain finds it really difficult when I pick up something new to decide which I have to use. Right, got like you. when I try pottery we are Emily's dad, I couldn't figure out if I were left handed or right handed. Because I cut ah. with my right hand but I write with my left. Oh. Mm, oh. So I'm a bit of a mess. <laughs> So I come to this and it's like I actually feel comfortable with it in my right hand. Okay. But my left hand doesn't know what it's meant to be doing. Because my left hand's going, what, what, what am I doing? So that's, that's what. But when I, um, I might even watch your first one and find out how to hold the, it's how yeah. to hold the thread. But I yeah. think I'd probably be left handed you with see, crochet. see, I'm right handed, but I hold, I hold the hook in the right hand, but I hold the work that I'm doing in the left hand. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay, yeah. I think, yeah, my hook will be at right hand. Okay. Mm, I think that's where it's comfy. Yeah. I mean, that's all I've managed to do, pick the hook up. <laughs> but apart from that, I'm doing great. You're doing really well, really, really well. Okay, now, we've, we've not minutes. got too long left. Ish. So, do you know what? We'll, what we'll probably do... 12 minutes, love. We'll do a little bit more of this, but if you are a bit behind, don't worry, because it is another method again. So, it's quite a long instruction, the next row. So I'm going to talk you through this one because it might confuse the beginners. So it says, row number two, one double crochet into second chain from hook. Then it goes on with much more instruction. Let's take it a step at a, a time. So we're not going to skip too far ahead. So we'll, we'll just take that first bit first. One double crochet into second chain from the hook. Now, if I look at the chain that I've just done, that is the first chain from the hook so the next one along will be my second chain from the hook so the reason you do that is because if you try and go into that first one it's always difficult oh, it's yeah. too tight it will give it you know it will make life difficult so you tend to do an extra stitch and then start in your second chain from the hook so I'll count one I'll count two and I'm going to go in there so I'm just going to put the yarn back around my hand just say double crochet so that's hook into the stitch, pick up the yarn, pull it through, yarn round and pull it through. That's your double crochet. Then it says 5CH, that stands for chain, 5 chain, miss 3 chain. So let's take it a step at a time again. So 5 chain, miss 3 chain. So we're going to do 5 chain stitches. Well, we've just done lots of chain stitches, so we're going to do them again. So one two, three, four, five. So this is answering that question you asked me earlier, Leonie. Do we always uh, go into the next going stitch? Into it, yeah. yeah. So we've done five chain, then it says miss three chain and one double crochet into next chain. So every one of these stitches is a chain stitch. So we count one, two, three that we're missing and then we need to do a double crochet into the next stitch. So yarn into the stitch, pick up that yarn, pull it through, yarn round and through. So what you form there oh, yeah. is a loop. It's yeah. a loop of chains. Cool. Okay. Molly said yes. <laughs> <laughs> then it's, it's got a little asterisk and it says repeat 10 times. So basically all you're going to do is exactly that same method 10 right. times now you do count that one that you've just done as the first one right okay okay so we're going to do that again so one dc into second chain from we can skip that bit now because we've done it so it's the five chain one two three four five you're going to miss three one two three right. and we're going to go into the next one pick up the yarn pull it through, yarn round, pull it through the two loops and we've now got our second loop. Oh wow, look at that. Yeah, okay. cool. So you want 10 of those. So it, again, although it looks very complicated that row, 
actually you are just repeating again one two three four five count three miss three so one two three into the next one you're making a double crochet and there you are so you've now Perfect. got three loops oh amazing okay. it does look like a little crown it does yeah so Beautiful. yes repeat that 10 times and then you won't get to the end because there's another instruction right okay so what time are we on about seven okay. minutes what we'll probably do is start this again next week apart from those 74 chains so it'll right. give you a chance to practice a little bit i'm just going to skip on to the next instruction Let's imagine I've got <laughs> ten, 10 loops there. Okay. Okay, so we're there? still on the same row because we haven't got to the end of it yet. So but we'll pretend we've got 10 of those loops. The next bit is four chain, miss three, one double crochet. And you do that eight times. So you're almost doing the same thing. But you're going to do one, two, three, only four chain. You're still going to miss three. One, two, three. And you're still going to do a double crochet into the next stitch. But all you're doing are making slightly smaller loops. You can uh, see you can, it's only one stitch difference, but it will make a difference the more you work this right. flower. Yeah, yeah. So I'll do that one more time. So four chain, one, two, three, four. Count, miss one, two, three. So I'm going into this one there. And this is my double crochet again, so I've made another loop. So I think. Oh, yeah. If everybody's managed to get to their 74 chain stitches, if you can follow the instructions that I've just done and create 10 of the loops with the five chains and eight of the loops with the four chains, yeah. then that's another bit of homework. That's extra homework. Wow. And you'll get a bonus star for that if you manage to do that. <laughs> Two you lots will of get a bonus Catherine. start, yes. What I will do next week, though, I will start that instruction again. For anybody that's maybe got stuck on that, we'll go yeah. back. Keep yeah. your 74 chain, but we'll go back and we'll do those loops and we'll continue with that. So this is making... <laughs> <laughs> this <laughs> Are you all Don't right? Don't mind me. <laughs> I thought, well, get up and stand by this just in case you need me to, but <laughs> unmounting the chair wasn't a ladylike experience. <laughs> <laughs> now, th it's quite difficult to see at the minute because there's more oh, rows gone I into see. this. Yeah. But we're starting to form the flower. Oh, that's so And the pretty. more you work into those, you'll start to work into those loops, you see, with treble stitches and different stitches, and it naturally forms the petals. Oh. And all you do is coil that up and it creates the flower. Again, different yarns will give different effects, but it's a really lovely way. Yeah. Of, uh, I mean, that could go on a brooch or it could go yes. into your bag. You could yeah. do lots of different things with Absolutely. that. Absolutely. It's just a really beautiful yeah. embellishment, isn't it? It is. That's stunning. Yeah. Is that right? Shall I give a reminder of where we're going you next can, time? You can do, yeah. Um, okay. How lovely. I mean, I've just been sitting there chilling out. Our Molly has been uh, keeping up with our Catherine. Um, trying, she says. Trying. You did better than me, love. Um, but um, if you do want the next kit, so remember, uh, the one you're working with at the moment did sell out. So everybody who's working at the moment, well done for getting that. But yeah, that one did sell out. Uh, this is going to be the next one. Uh, this is going to start on the 5th of August. Um, and of course, with something like this, again, something different. It's just your little old granny's, little old granny squares. <laughs> it's just your, your granny squares there um, that have been formed into this, um, this beautiful bag. I like that because it's a bit different as well, isn't it? Um, and of course, with that one, for just eight pounds, you are getting your um, your yarn, you're getting your um, needle there, a needle, you're getting your crochet hook and you're getting the instructions, but most importantly, you're getting Catherine. And it's going to be those live demonstrations that you can craft along with um, with our Catherine to make that lovely bag and to get the hints and tips. I mean, the, the whole premise of this is learning it's Definitely, just learning yeah. those those wonderful techniques and once you've learned these skills i mean you can use so ma there's so many patterns out there it's, oh, the, it's the, such a really wonderful is. skill and set to get yeah and some of the stitches that you do see and you, 
you will look at them and think, well, how on earth would I do that? But actually, yeah. they're far less complicated than you will ever realise once you've got the basics. It's just the, you know, the way that you work, whether you're doing chains in between, whether you're doing multiple stitches into one hole, it's, it's all those things. But the basic stitches generally are very few, in a sense. Yes, yeah, absolutely. Look, look how I moulded that. I'm going to pretend I did. I didn't. Moulded. Oh, wow. That's really good, Mel. It's soft, isn't it? Yeah. Yes. That looks very neat. Boom. <laughs> neat and tidy, tidy and neat. It looks lovely. Um, I'll give you that back, my love. Now, how do people find you on Facebook, Catherine? Okay, well, if you if you want the crochet group, it's Get Hooked with Sugar Buttons. And I've added and Vintage Chic on the end now because it's two styles. But just, just search for Get Hooked on Sugar Buttons. You can find me on my uh, craft store page as well, Catherine yep. Sturica. The craft store. Craft order. Uh, <laughs> nearly, nearly. Uh, yeah, and then I've got my own page as well. Yeah, so yeah. There's lots of ways. Excellent. I mean, the definitely get the crochet one because um, you know Catherine's beautiful kits as well are just exquisite. Uh, so do have a look on there for what Catherine's got coming up as well. Um, if you've got any questions, the next so next week is the the next lesson. It's, obviously, it's the last so we'll, one. That'll so be the yeah, you've been set a lot of homework. Remember, you're getting right <laughs> up. To where you change the colour of the yarn so up to row 25 if your yarn will stretch that far if it won't just take it as far as it will go so we're going to do the top little bit next week and we're going to continue with the flower just to go back to that flower if you have managed to do what I've just taught you there don't unpull it I'm only going to repeat that in case there's people that didn't get it yeah. so if you've got that and you've cracked it stick with it because you'll be a step in front for next week amazing amazing and I do love it because yeah it's so chilled isn't it? Yeah. Sitting there on my little yeah. chair, that was really quite the <laughs> nicest hour ever. Um, that's wonderful. Thank you ever so much, Catherine. Aww. Yeah, no, it's been a lovely hour, hasn't it? Um, remember, blah, blah, blah. Um, if you do want to get this kit, if you do want to split it into two flexes, you can do because, of course, it is our uh, festive flex extravaganza. Um, woo, uh, and that is running till next Tuesday. So anything you're buying over the weekend, um, if it's over £5, you can split that cost as well. Uh, make sure you do tune into our Catherine next next Friday um, for the, the next episode and the last episode of this wonderful Well, it's podcast. Thursday, actually. Oh, it's Thursday. <laughs> You'll have missed it if you wait till Friday. Yeah, Thursday. I, I don't actually know what day it is. Knitting. Part two of the knitting is on Saturday this week as well. Right. Okay, got all the days. Yeah, yeah. Crochet so Thursday. Thursday and Saturday. Don't listen to me. Thank you, Catherine. <laughs> Thank have you. a lovely week.